I was mindlessly scrolling Instagram the other day and I saw a video where somebody takes a Dremel and does friction welding with 3D printer filament. So I thought, let's give this a try. So I tried to film this video last week and it was a big fail because I was trying to use normal 1.75 millimeter 3D printer filament. And I realized that you really need the thicker stuff, which is like 2.8 millimeters or something. So I picked up a small roll of that and we're gonna give it a try again today. So I got a few experiments here on the workbench. I have these 90 degree pieces that I printed out. So we'll use this to do our initial tests. Maybe we'll try and friction weld two of these together at the butt ends. Also, I have this steak for my candy canes during the holiday season, and I commonly break off this piece. So I'll see if I can weld that together. And then I also have my wide nozzle tip for my Milwaukee M18 blower, and it's been broken for a while. But this is something that is, you know, a realistic use case of I have this part that broke and I want to see if I can weld it back together and make it usable rather than having to reprint the whole thing. This bigger 3D printer filament fits right into the chuck end of the Dremel, which is nice. And I'm going to flex it so that it's somewhat straight. And if I turn that on... Looks good, it kind of fans out because it's not totally straight, but we'll see if it works. Here we go with attempt number one at friction welding. That looks pretty darn good. I have a, another 90 degree piece just butted up to the end and let's see if we can weld these together. That really worked out a lot better than I thought it would. I mean, look at that. These two pieces are attached and pretty strong. I mean, I'm really pushing into it. <clears throat> that was very impressive. It took a lot of force to actually break those two pieces apart. So these spikes that go into the ground for my candy canes that go out front, they take me about an hour and a half to print. So if I could weld these back together, then that would save me a lot of time. So I'm gonna try and just tack it So I just put a little blob there on the inside corners and it's on there. So now I'll go and actually put a bead down on each of the sides. I am extremely impressed. I mean, this only took like two minutes it's on there. I mean, I'm flexing it pretty hard with my thumb. It's not coming off. So let's just shove it in the vise and pull on it a little bit. Pulling on it. Oh, move the whole workbench with it. It's stronger than it was when I broke it on purpose for this video. Whew. 
I mean, that's impressive. All right, last use case is my wide nozzle for my Milwaukee blower. As you can see, this whole layer is kind of broken. So I'm thinking I'm gonna clamp this down, give it a little bit of a weld. This thing is usable again. You can actually restore, you know, some bigger parts without having to reprint the whole thing. And that's super cool. Still pretty strong. I think I could have made that stronger, especially if I would have hit both sides. So if you want to do this at home, go ahead. I think it's awesome. Just make sure you wear safety glasses because if you leave the filament too long, it will whip around, break off and fly at you. So just make sure you're being safe. Get yourself a roll of 2.85 millimeter 3D printer filament. I picked up a small roll on Amazon for like 10 bucks. I'll put a link in the description below. Safety glasses, Dremel, and the filament. You could fix some of your 3D prints without having to print the whole thing over again. So that's gonna be it for this one. Like the video, put a comment down below. What should I try next? What should I print? You know, any ideas you have for videos, I'll give it a shot. And subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.